Probably because it was like six o'clock at night. We wanted yeah. to go for tea. I had to take my hat off, let some steam out. 100% truthful on this, and it's gonna be so interesting. I hope you lot. Today is an exciting day. Now, a lot of you have been asking me about the stabilizers, and I've not seen them much because I've been around the yard feeding, Dad's been doing the shepherding, but today we're gonna go and bring them back. So I thought what I would do is I would do a video that you've all been asking for, which is a bit of a comparison between the stabilizers and the ones, the blue cows that we've got at home. There's 10 stabilizer cows, 10 calves up the village. We're gonna bring them back, put them in the shed, and then we're gonna weigh them, weigh the cows, weigh the calves. We can compare the cow weight and the calf weight, and we can see how much they've grown. Bearing in mind that these stabilizers are younger by three to four weeks than the calves that we weaned the other day. And it's also the final outing for the beef bus this year. She can then get washed and put away in the shed, ready for the spring. So without further ado, let's crack on. I probably should point out, I've also made a little bit of an investment in the channel. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm hoping if you watch closely, you'll be able to work it out. Let me know in the comments if you do. One of the harder things about getting these cows is that gateway there, because you have to reverse in off the road on the blind side, and it is not much fun. But hopefully we can get it. There we go, round in one. You soon get used to it though when you've done it enough, but never gets any easier. Oh, and if you want to see the stabilizer cows, well, here you go. probably should admit that I filmed that yesterday because dad had already got these cows in before I got here but we'll just take a walk through them. We're in this little bit of a lane. Look at this, cow and calf. And remember these cows were heifers as well so this is the first calves they've ever had. So to get calves this big they've done really well. They're nice and quiet so should be all right. These couple, couple of bull calves, that's a cow. That's a heifer calf there. These are some of the cows. They're not too big, these cows. That's a nice little heifer calf. Heifer calf. Bull calf. There's some big, big bits of kit there. We'll get them across the scales when we get back. They're going to be impressive. I actually think that they could be bigger than the ones at home. Again, they've not had any creep. Just look at them. Look at this bull calf here. Look, look how wide it is across its back. It's real stocky animals. I'm quite impressed. But we'll let the scales do the talking. Gonna take pens of four on two loads and then hopefully we should be able to get the hurdles back as well. What do you want? Cows first or a couple of cows?
I'd take my hat off, let some steam out. Back to the yard. The reason why these stabilizers have been able to stay out a little bit longer than the cows at home is because this ground up the village is really light. There's a sand and gravel quarry, well was a sand and gravel quarry just over there. And this ground is just sandy. Any rain just goes straight through it. So it does burn up real bad in a drought, but when the weather's like this, you just don't even know the cows have been on it, to be honest. Right, they're all in now. We didn't film the second lot because it started chucking down in rain. So rather than get the camera wet and the microphone all wet, we left it. What we're gonna do, we have them out. I'm gonna weigh them, weigh the cows, weigh the calves. We've done a sheet at lunchtime so that we can work out exactly how fast these are growing, what the daily live weight gains is of the calves. And then we can also work out the weight ratio of the calf to the cow as well. So you can see all that in a minute. But we'll get these cows out first and get more weighed and get all that filled in. Come on. really interested. We've got some real good data on these cows now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work it all out and then I'll see if I can get dad to sit down and we'll go through it and we're gonna explain to you the good, the bad, the ugly. We'll split bulls and heifers, do all the data between the twos. We'll look at the cow weights, the weaning weights, the percentage of cow body weight. We'll do the lot. 100% truthful on this. And it's gonna be so interesting. Right, so we've come inside and we're gonna go through, there goes the dog. We're gonna go through this. Dad's worked it all out on everything. So we've got birth weight, uh, average age in days, cow weight, calf weight, kilograms of daily live weight gain, and then the percent of the cow weight. So we'll go through each one. We'll tell you the highest, the lowest, and then the average. So birth weight, the heaviest when they were born was 42 kilos. The lightest was 32 kilos, so quite a lot lighter. And the average was 37.3. I would say that 42 kilos is probably Average for the blue cows? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, so yeah. I think the blue cows yeah. will probably have a heavier calf with the Charolais calf, but yeah, I'd say that's pretty average. 32 is a little bit on the light side, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, I thought so, yeah. Obviously the average was 37, but the um, when you look through the list, that one at 32 was a bit of a one-off for some at 35, isn't there? But yeah. A lot of them are 39. 36, 38. Sort of, yeah, so that one was a bit out on a, out on a limb and so were the 42, I think. It does look like the bulls are generally bigger though. So we've got yeah. bulls 40, there's two of them at 42 there, there's one at 39. So it does seem that the bulls yeah. are bigger, the heifers the, are smaller. These are all out of first calves as well. So they're, um, all, they're all heifers in calf, so. Yeah, and we didn't have to pull any of them, did we? I think no, we just, did we no, have one? Um, no, we might have helped one, but we didn't jack it, something like that. We didn't actually yeah, have I to. Yeah, I think we perhaps put some ropes on one and just pull Probably because it was like six o'clock at night, we wanted yeah. to go for tea. Average days, so the oldest one is 267 days. The youngest one is 203 days. That's not really down to us though, because we bought them in calf, so that was just down to when Tim put the bull in. And he calves a couple of weeks later than us, so that's probably why that is a little yeah. bit. Interestingly though, jumping forward a little bit, the oldest one weighs as much as our biggest blue cross Charolais cow or calf, but it's about a month younger. That's something to keep in mind. But the average day's age is 246.7, if you can get 0.7 days. Again, that the one at 203 it was, is a lot younger than yours, isn't it? She, it's a heifer. She, even, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's about... Obviously, uh, 267, the oldest, 246 is the average, and 
just that one is, is 40 is, is 39 days younger than the next youngest yeah so. but and interestingly that is the smallest one in weight but weight is not necessarily a thing to go by because you really want to be looking at daily live weight gain, but we'll get to there in a minute. Cow weight, which is always interesting because we want to get cows that are like 600-ish kilos, 650. The heaviest cow, which is quite a lot bigger, it's quite a lot framier than the others, is 689. And the lightest cow is 535. And then the average is 613. So about where we want them, really. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Weight of the calves. So the heaviest calf was also the oldest calf and it was 365 kilos. The lightest is the youngest calf, is a heifer, and that's 262. And then the average in, 313.6. They're good, and considering they've not had any creep, they're on just grass, milk. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Well, I don't know why they're even on grass, because Leicestershire, we didn't grow any of this summer. Yeah, so. to be fair. <laughs> it was a bit of a draw That's summer, pretty good, so. considering they've not had any grass. Yeah, it's been a tough year for them this and year. It, but more importantly, kilograms of daily live weight gain, so how fast they're actually growing. Best one is growing at 1.21 kilos a day. The worst one is still growing at 1.04 kilos a day and they're averaging 1.11. That's basically with no creep feeding very little grass. They were rotationally grazed, but sometimes you wonder why you're moving them up, but yeah. that's besides the point. We've not looked, I should have really got what the worst blue one is at, but I can tell you now, it'll be a lot lower than that. And interestingly, percent of cow weight. So they always say you want to get 40% minimum, ideally 50% of your cow weight, don't they, realistically, is yeah, what they yeah. kind of say you should have at weaning. I think um, the being, quote, you want to be at 50 if you can, don't they? So. Yeah, so that's where you want to yeah. be. The best ratio was 60%, the worst was 39.7, and that was that smallest one. And then they're averaging 51.09% of the cow weight, which is, again, pretty good, considering yeah. the year and the fact they've struggled for food. The cows look in better condition, don't they? Cows are carrying a lot more flesh than ever the blue cows are, aren't they? Considering they've yeah. had the same yeah. sort of amount of grass. They've got over the drought a lot better than the blue cows yeah, have. Yeah. I don't think the drought affected them as badly as what it did the blue cows did at the end of the day. No. Didn't knock them about so much, even though they're only first carvers. Well, people are probably going to want to know, do we like the stabilizers and do we want to keep going forward with them? I think you know the answer to that. Yeah. Right, we like them that much. I've bought some more. I think like, we've learned a lot from the blue cows that we wouldn't, we'd change now moving forward. Although there's nothing necessarily wrong with them, I think where we're trying to move, the stabiliser cows are better. Yeah, I don't think you want to be um, bothered about doing change, do you? You've got, to, you've got to be prepared to do change with the times, haven't you? If we want to do more grass grazed and such like going forward, that's the, we've got to change the breeding. Yeah, because you consider we're going to lose subsidy whatever else it's we're going to have to make profit on each cow so the, each cow's got to be profitable that means they've got to do the right things like on the sheet they've got to come up with the right numbers and it's got to it's got to make sense we can't be chucking loads of cereal down the neck for the sake of chucking cereal down the neck and we're wanting to move to more herbal lays and less red clovers and such like don't we go down that route and these cows seem to be doing it for us don't they at the minute as far as we can see now you know right yeah. we're signing off See you in a bit. Bye. Bye.